So with that, um, I would uh, love to introduce Jerry Carter from Oro CRM. Uh, Jerry, and just to tell everyone, we asked uh, some of our partners if they could give us a quick few fun facts um, just to get to know them a little bit better. You're going to be hearing about uh, their operations and how they can help and what they do and new technologies and, and things that they find are going to be important to you. But we wanted to give you a little bit of a, a teaser into them as, as people, of course. And so Jerry has triplets. Um, and you know, as someone who, who has a, a newborn daughter at home, I feel for you. <laughs> I can only imagine. Um, he made the decision on, on where to go to college based on proximity to good skiing. Um, so I'm pretty impressed by that. Um, I, I can fall down a mountain with style like the best of them, but, but that's my hat's off. And uh, apparently, and I haven't tested this yet, so I, I do recommend that someone is going to have to put him up to this later. Um, he can quote or sing most hip hop songs from the 90s. Um, so we're going to have to find out later. Yeah. And with that, Jerry Carter. Um, so uh, let me be the first to thank uh, Seth and Robert for organizing this um, event. And I'm not just saying that because they're allowing me to speak first. I'm really, uh, this is a great uh, thing for the South Florida market. And we're really uh, pleased and proud to be a sponsor and, and to be a part of it. So um, the hip hop uh, song uh, challenge is open to anyone. I'll be right at our booth, uh, and, and I, I will take on anyone uh, because because I know almost all the lyrics from the 90s. Don't test me on any Drake or anything like that. Um, second, um, it's true. I have triplets, um, so we have a. My wife and I have a 12-year-old uh, son. We have nine-year-old triplets, uh, and then we just added uh, our final addition. Uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, so we, we have five kids. We live in San Francisco, California, which is nuts, uh, a nuts place to have five kids. And um, people always ask, you know, what is it like? What is it like to, to have five kids? And uh, my standard answer is um, imagine that you're drowning and someone hands you a baby. Uh, that, that is, uh, that is a, a line from Jim Gaffigan that I stole and, and I use pretty regularly. Um, the, the second thing, and, and this is also a, a true story, when we, had, uh, when we had the triplets, we actually came about nine months after they were born, we came to South Florida um, and we wanted to get away and we had grandma watch the kids, my wife and I, we had grandma watch the kids and we came and we stayed at the, uh, the Breakers uh, in West Palm Beach and uh, we, we saw nothing. We slept the entire time, uh, and, and so I have yet to see uh, really any of, of uh, this area, which I'm excited to, to tour around a little bit. Um, but enough about me, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I wanna talk to you a little bit about Oro CRM, um, but really I don't wanna talk about us as a business or, or as a company. What I really wanna talk about is you. Uh, and the challenges that you're facing and the headwinds that all e-commerce and multi-channel commerce businesses are really feeling. Uh, and so with that, um, that's really what I'm gonna talk about. My prior remarks are gonna be brief. I gave myself a little bit more uh, time to just tell you stories in the beginning. Um, but my remarks are gonna be brief and I, and I really wanna talk about your, your needs and what we're seeing as we talk with, with e-commerce merchants. Um, and then I want to talk about a couple of case studies of, of what we're seeing in the market from, from real live you know, merchants like you guys that are outselling and, and trying, to, you know, trying to grow their businesses here uh, in the market. So who, who is Oro? Um, we're we're uh, you know, about 100 plus uh, folks. Um, we're based in California. We were actually founded by um, the original founding team of Magento. So um, myself, I led uh, worldwide commercial operations, uh, all monetization at Magento up until 2012. My business partner, Yoav, was the co-founder and CTO uh, at Magento. And Roy Rubin, um, who was our advisor, was the original uh, co-founder and CEO of Magento. So we left Magento after the acquisition um, by eBay. So Magento was acquired by eBay in 2011. We left after that acquisition, about a year after. And, and part of the reason we left is we heard customers talking about how they just did not have customer management tools to run their businesses. 
and that this was a real issue. So you know, co companies were looking, um, they would come to us and they would say, this was a very standard conversation, still is. They would come to us, they say, you know what, our business is growing. We're really starting to see success, but we don't know why or how. Um, we know we're growing our customer base, but we need to understand who our customers are, how they're coming in. We need to organize our, our sales efforts. We need to organize our support with our marketing. We need to tie all this together. And we said, great, go look at salesforce.com uh, or go look at Microsoft Dynamics. And they would say, fantastic. They would go look at those solutions and they would come back uh, to us two weeks later and say, we have no idea what those guys were talking about. They didn't get our business at all. Um, you know, they were trying to talk to me about leads and opportunities and uh, forecasting probabilities, and we don't do that. You know, we're an e-commerce business. We just, that's not our business. Um, or we're a multi-channel commerce business, and that's just not us. So um, we said, well, why, why isn't there something like that out there? There really should be. And so um, we created Oro CRM. We've had great momentum. Uh, since we started. So we launched the product in 2014. We've had actually over 100,000 downloads. We have over 40,000 um, active installations of the product and about 20,000 um, active enterprise customers. So it's gone exceptionally well. We're really pleased with the results. Um, and and we, think it's, we think part of the reason that the results have been so good is that, that so many businesses and individuals and companies are struggling with the same problems. And here are the problems, here are the challenges that, that companies like you all are facing um, that we hear about day in and day out. One, you need your customers more than they need you. And uh, you know, people a lot of times uh, you know, sort of have a reaction to this statement, but it's true. You need your customers more than they need you. 20 years ago, that was not the case. Uh, 20 years ago, there was much more of a seller-buyer balance in the universe, and that is not the case anymore. Uh, Amazon, uh, uh, the internet, just a general commoditization of so many markets has changed uh, the commerce world to where you really need your customers uh, more than they need you, and, and all of the analysts are following this trend, um, and so that's a, that's a real issue. Um, two, customers share more information than they ever have. So within everybody's you know, pocket, they have access to 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 friends that they can tell about their experience with your brand and with your company. So it used to be, again, 20 years ago, if somebody had a bad experience with your business or a good experience with your business, they may tell a couple of, of of friends and and then that was it and your business slowly grew now they can actually you know within minutes tell 500 to a thousand people about the terrible experience they've had with your product or about the amazing experience that they've had with your product and this is why companies like Zappos and companies like Warby Parker are going from uh, you know fifty thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars in revenue to $50 million in revenue to a half a billion dollars in revenue within a matter of a couple of years because the explosive nature, and, and vice versa, you see very well-funded, well-capitalized companies that are coming to market and that just miss uh, on certain areas and it doesn't matter, um, it doesn't matter how well-capitalized they are, if their product isn't good or if they don't have the right customer experience, they're going out of business very quickly. Three, technology does not always play nicely. And this is actually, uh, when, when Robert spoke, this, was, this is the number one challenge that we're hearing from, from e-commerce merchants. Technology doesn't play nice. And, and the way the, the, the group that suffers is you, the business owner, because you have no idea what's going on in your business. And, and second is the consumer, because somebody has a interaction with your support organization and then they, um, you know, and then they call back a week later, and nobody knows what the issue was or who helped them. They um, have a lost order, and somebody has to go into three or four systems to actually find the order, find the shipping information, uh, find what's going on. They're receiving offers for things that they've already purchased. They receive an offer for something that they bought last week, and now it's on sale, so they're mad at you. 
uh, that that uh, you're marketing to them. The same things that you just have are are batch and blasting. And these are all things that our customers are saying. We know we need to change. We need help. We need tools that really help us organize our customer experience, organize our customer interactions, and and really, you know, the 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 only source of true uh, competitive advantage is again to create a better customer experience. Now, this this is a trend that's been actually happening over the last five or six years. In fact, when we were at Magento, um, we had a, a venture capitalist. His name was David Scott, a very very good uh, venture capitalist. Came and talked with us and and met with us as a leadership team. And one of the things he said to me was, you know, as we were talking about you know, the customer experience that we were giving to our customers, he said, have you all done any journey mapping? And, uh, you know, I, I, embarrassingly, I was, you know, sitting around with the management team and I was like, journey hoosing? What, what is that? I, I had no idea what journey mapping was. And he said that, you know, the customers that they were advising, and, and this is something that's been really valuable for our customers, the, the customers that the, and the companies that they were advising and investing in, they were challenging them to actually go through and map out the entire customer experience. How does somebody find you? How do they uh, browse? What else do they look at? What messages are they seeing when they're, when they're actually coming to purchase? How do they purchase your product? How do they receive your product? Once they receive your product, how do they, how do they get support? Uh, if, they get, if they don't get the support they need, how are they returning your product? How are they repurchasing your product? Just map out that entire process from the view, not of you as a business, but from the view of your customer. And if you map out, and as we did this, we thought we were pretty good, we found holes all along the way. These disjointed places where once someone would purchase the product, you know, they, would, they wouldn't get you know, this really nice handoff from our support organization. So they wouldn't know, you know where they needed to actually submit a ticket or who they needed to talk to or how they needed to get help. So as you go through and think about you know, journey, the journey of your customer, there's really two things uh, to this. 80% of it really is business process. 80% of it is about business. It's not about technology. But 20% of it is about technology. And what you need to make sure is that this entire process is seamless for your customer and that the technology needed to make all of this work together is really seamless. And that is what we, when we, when we built Oro, that's what we really decided to do. We decided to give people a single view of their customer across multiple channels. So we bring in things like Magento data, eBay purchases, Amazon purchases, um, support requests, support tickets, um, uh, marketing campaigns that you're running, all of this under an account view under a customer view. And we bring all of this into one place for two distinct groups. Um, we give you a 365 degree view of customer for, for two distinct groups. One is your sales organization, so that your sales and customer service team, when, um, when someone calls in or when someone needs assistance, they have all the information in a single place and can actually really quickly help that customer. And they know, you know who talked to them last week and they know the next step in the follow-up process um, as well. And second is for your marketing organization. So we give tools for marketers because all of this customer information in a single location is incredibly valuable. And once you've invested in actually getting it all in a single place, you actually want to do something with it from a marketing perspective, like do customer segmentation. Um, you know, segment customers based on their personas, based on affinity groups, based on um, who has a really high lifetime sales value but hasn't purchased in the last 90 days because we really want to get out and, and market to them. And it allows you to go from batch and blast emails, you know, a weekly email to all of your customers to doing much more sophisticated um, email marketing, much more sophisticated retargeting, more sophisticated campaign management across everything that, that you're doing. And um, and, and all of this coming into this customer collected data, which allows you reports and dashboards and a single view of, of who your customer is. A great example is we actually were working with a, and I'm sorry for the camera guys, I'm walking around a little bit. I, I can't hang behind the podium, thanks. 
Um, so with the, um, um, we were working with this, this company. They're a daily deal um, home goods provider. Average order value was about $15. So these guys were, these guys were, were working on sort of very, very slim margins, small order, small order value. We um, implemented Oro CRM because they wanted to see a single view of their customer across their Magento business and their support tickets. Um, and support and customer service uh, information. But they basically said, you know, the CEO said to me, I have no, we're, we're a $15 million business, I have no idea who my customers are. I think I know who my customers are, but I have no idea. Um, so we implement Oro CRM, we run a few reports, we get on the phone, CEO's on the call, it's a true story, and um, we're looking at his data and we just pull up a report that basically is lifetime sales value of their customers. And we found that about 15 to 30 of their customers had lifetime sales value. Mind you, on an average order value of $15, uh, they had lifetime sales value of over $30,000. This was like 30 customers. And, and the CEO was like, I don't believe it. The data's wrong. We were like, no, the data's not wrong. The data's right. And what they actually found out is that there were, um, in, within their customer group, there were actually um, home decorators and office decorators that were buying 50 to 100 um, products at a time. And they were placing these big orders and, and no one knew because they just didn't have the single view of their customer. And so this allowed them to sort of think about their strategy. You know, we could go after these, this market. We could really start to market to this group. And so it allows you to, once you know who your customer is, it allows you to think so much more strategically about what you're doing as a business. And, and you all are the, the, the most qualified individuals in the world to run your business. You know your customers, you know your business, you know, you know everything about it. And what we want to do is just put the data in the hands of the business owners so that you can make decisions about, about really you know, growing your customer base. Now just one other example, and this is a good general purpose example. I, and, and I tried to pull, when I pulled some case studies, I really tried to pull some general purpose things that hopefully everybody could, could kind of take a couple of things from. Sparesbox, this is a company out of Australia. Sparesbox, um, they are a custom auto part uh, retailer. So they sell custom auto parts, very, very custom, for specific to your make and model. And what they actually created was the, an ability to, to create um, a, your own personal garage. It's actually a really clever idea. You create your own garage and I enter in that I drive a 2014 uh, Toyota Sienna and a 2012 uh, Honda Pilot and um, then they start marketing to me um, and that's all under my account view, it's in my garage and they start marketing to me only and specifically about, about the, for the vehicles that I own. It's an ingenious idea, and they've actually done this, um, you know, using our product. But but our product was ancillary. This was their idea. This was their business idea. It was their business process, and it's gone great for them. They've they've actually closed around a round of venture capital funding. Um, they're growing like crazy in Australia, all around the idea that if they can gather a few um, really key data points about their customers, they can start to have this this interaction that's so much more enriched. Um, with their customers, and, and they're they're you know they're do, using this information, this garage information, to market to customers uh, across all the channels that they sell and market. Another company is actually here in the U.S. They're they're called Overture. Um, it's actually the business is Blue Soda Promo. So they they were um, a B two B business, actually doing um, you know so they're they're selling B two B using e commerce and Magento was their was their main e commerce channel. And uh, Blue Soda Promo actually was looking to organize you know, all of these things that they were doing offline from a B2B standpoint, taking leads to opportunities to sort of growing these opportunities with all of the things that were happening on um, Magento without their knowledge. So they were looking to see, okay, you know, what are customers doing before they purchase? We want to get down to a click value. Uh, or click level of what people are doing. We want to understand who's abandoning their shopping carts and actually reach out to them for follow-ups. We want to have really good account management where we actually understand what our customers are doing on the website 
and, and can take all of this consolidated information and not just use, use it for account management, but also use it for marketing segmentation and create segments uh, of, and, and types of customers based on the, you know, the products that they purchased, helping them with reorders, automating that process, just creating a better customer experience. Now, I want to, this is my last slide, and what, what I want to say and close with is that your competitors are thinking about this. They, your competitors are thinking about how to create a better customer experience, and they want to steal your customers. And I'm not saying that to frighten you, that's just reality. Um, it is, it is the, the e-commerce marketplace is getting more and more competitive. And uh, you know, the opportunity for, for you all and for us in this room it is to get there before they do. Um, because if you, look at, um, if you look at the companies over the last five years that have been online juggernauts, either in the, in the B2C space or the B2B space, almost exclusively you will see that their competitive differentiator um, has not been price. Um, it's, it, price is actually like a commodity. People think that you, people just expect that you're gonna have a good price. Um, it's actually not brand. Um, only 25% of, of consumers actually report to being brand loyal anymore. So brand loyalty has gone down uh, over the last you know, five to 10 years, and I'm seeing heads nodding because it's just absolutely true. Brand loyalty is lower. Um, if, and if you look at the third thing, it's customer experience. And the companies that have won over the last five to seven years are doing it on customer experience, are doing it on better, uh, more competitive, more personalized customer experience. So as you, as you, you know, as you, you know, leave this conference today, I just challenge you: whether you use our product or not, it it actually doesn't matter. But but uh, well, it, I hope you do. But but whether you use our product or not, um, actually getting a better uh, customer experience is is really so much more than just a software tool. It really is about business process, about wrapping your mind around, hey, look, troops, how are we going to create a better customer experience? And um, how are we gonna map that journey for our customers? So with that, uh, thank you so much for having me. I'll, I'll be here, I'd love to chat with you guys.